Tim, congratulations, you're the first British astronaut to go into space for 20 years. How does it feel? It feels fantastic. I'm really delighted with the assignment um, and particularly the fact that it's a long duration mission to the International Space Station. Last week we saw um, Commander Chris Hadfield come back to Earth. He spent five months up there and built an enormous following. Is there a pressure to try and interact with the public more now, given that he gave everybody an insight into what space life is like? Uh, he certainly set the bar very high without a shadow of a doubt, but many, many astronauts before him have also uh, interacted with the public through social media, through photography, and that's certainly something that I'll be continuing to do. I think Chris has managed to reach out to everybody around the world, and he's had such a great response, um, and everybody would like to continue that. It, it's great that there's so much enthusiasm for human spaceflight and ex exploration at the moment. We were told today about the Apollo effect. How do you intend to go about inspiring a new generation of young people um, in, in, about science? Well, really, I hope to, to bring them along on the journey, really, and tell them about what I've done in the past, how I got to where I am today, um, and uh, on board the space station to be exploring new things in science. So uh, opening up questions for them to be able to participate, competitions, um, science programs or science experiments I can perform on board the space station, things like that, in order to really make them part of this mission also. What specifically are you going to be studying while you're in space? It's, it's a number of different projects that are running simultaneous, I understand. It is, yes. I mean, science is the major reason for us going there. It's a wonderful research laboratory. And uh, it's actually a, a number of different laboratories that are all attached together in these modules. So it's a range from human physiology to medical research, um, biological, biological experiments, fluid physics, for example, looking at different metals, mixing together, uh, a whole range of different things. And it's a bit too early yet to, to know exactly which scientific experiment I'll be doing. Cutting edge technology, you've done a lot of training, but there are huge risks involved. Are you, are you worried at all? Not particularly worried about the risks involved, no. Uh, I'm used to working in a high risk environment. I'm used to understanding about risk mitigation as well. So really this is just uh, another development of my career from a test pilot to an astronaut. You lose 1% of body mass per month. That sounds quite scary to me. <laughs> in body mass, sorry, bone mass per month. Is there any way that you can get that back or how, how will that affect you in terms of ageing? Are you you're going to go up a, a, a 40 year old man? Will you return back looking less, <laughs> less healthy? I hope not. Um, there are many things change uh, to the body in microgravity. One of them, as you mentioned, is bone mass uh, reduces, also muscle mass reduces, blood volume reduces, the heart muscle shrinks because it's offloaded. Many, many things. The body is, is fantastic at adapting and it adapts to the new environment very well. So in order to counter that, we do two hours of exercise every day on the space station to keep our muscle mass and to keep ourselves in good shape. But you're right, the bone density, um, there's not much you can do about that and it takes about one to two years to fully recover in terms of bone density from a mission. And how do you go about recovering that? Well, it's a gradual process. When you first land, you're given uh, physiotherapy for a, a number of weeks to, to make sure that your body can tolerate the, the, the Earth's gravity. And it's a very gradual, slow process of rehabilitation. But having said that, it, it's not too dramatic. I mean, you've already seen that astronauts, by the time they've landed in, in Houston, having got off the plane from Kazakhstan, they're already up and walking by themselves. And astronauts have been known to be going jogging on the second or third day on, on return from a mission. So it's not too punishing on the body. There's been a lot of um, information out there about the, the Apollo um, team who went up and the, the psychological effects that they felt when they came back down to Earth, you know, having done something so incredibly exciting. How do you adjust back to normal life? <laughs> I think uh, something that's always kept me very grounded is, is family and friends and I think that will always be the case. Uh, it, it, you're right, it's a truly remarkable experience and to leave the planet and to see it in a completely different view, from a completely different viewpoint is very unique. Um, but no, I think readjusting back down uh, after the mission will be down to friends and family. When you were a little boy, did you ever dream of being an astronaut? I did as a, as a young child and then aviation kind of took over and I pursued my career in aviation and I was just very fortunate that as a test pilot you kind of work more closely with the space industry and this opportunity came along four years ago to join the European Astronaut Corps. And in terms of how you're going to be living on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of food, what sort of things will you be eating and what are you going to miss the most back here on Earth? Yeah, the food's very interesting. Uh, a lot of it is tinned food because that can be heated up easily in electrical heaters. Uh, a lot of it is also rehydrated food just with a hot water dispenser. Um, so it's, it's a limit to how exciting and exo exotic the food can get. But we also bring European food on board the space station that is tailored specifically to us. Um, and that tends to be a, a good quality and quite exciting food. Uh, in terms of what I'll miss the most, it will clearly be my family I'll miss the most.
And what about alcohol? Are you allowed to have a beer after a really difficult day? Unfortunately not, no. There's, there's no alcohol on board the station. Okay. Tim, best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.